Hi everybody, my name is Jan Dufour and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator living just outside of Louisville, Kentucky. Today we're going to make this hugs card. It's made with a set I made a couple weeks ago. Um, I used the koala for also hugging because they're both hugging. Um, called Wild and Sweet. I bought it last year and I just hadn't gotten around to using it or couldn't think of what to do with it. Um, as inspiration, we have a new color called uh, Pebbled Path, which is a real true taupe. It's uh, grayish when you put it with gray things, and it's uh, brownish when you put it with brown things. So it's a really, um, it's, a, it's a weird color at first, and so is this wild weed, and you're not sure what to do with it. This also changes colors when you put it near yellow things, it looks gold, and when you put it through Green, near green things, it looks greenish. It's a uh, very interesting color, but it worked very well for this. So this is the set we're using. And then we're using um, something that's an online exclusive. Um, you can only find it online now. It's called Alphabet a la Mode. You just go to my website, which my website for my store is jandufour.stampinup.net. You go to shop now and then products. And then under products, you scroll down to online exclusives. And they have like four pages of wonderful things that they're selling. Some will be as long as they last. And others, um, if it says currently unavailable, just means they're restocking it. So come back soon. But anyway, that's where that is. Um, if you're seeing me on YouTube and you need to get the project sheet, which is right here, it gives you all of the things that I needed to use, the cutting instructions and assembly, you can go to my uh, website, which is stampmesilly.com. If you have any questions, you can email me at jandufour at yahoo.com. So I'll put that aside. So we're using a Wild and Sweet and then the Alphabet a la Mode to make this card. So let's start. I already have in here um, the stamp that we need to use, if you're wondering what this weird thing is, it's Jan Stamp Positioner, which I made. Uh, if you need instructions on this, there's a, just search on my website for Stamp Positioner and it'll come up. Uh, Stamp and I've got rid of their Stamp Positioner and some of the others are really expensive. And this works, I would say 99% of the time. Oops, that's going in the wrong direction. Um, you know, so it, it's a really good compromise. The L-shaped one that I make with it does different things, does things a little bit differently and is easier or more advantageous for certain projects. So all I'm doing is a stamping with my um, new color called Pe Pebbled Path. Um, you just have to make sure it's up in the corner. You can go ahead and stamp it and press. You open it up and it's beautiful. And there you have it. Now this size is basic white. It's a five by three and three quarters. And you need two of them, but you only stamp one of them. One's going on the inside. So I'm gonna put that aside. I'm gonna close up my stamp pad. I'll close this up and scoot it out of the way. And we'll start with our business. So here is our tree. Um, I did color it with a um, Stampin' Blends with the light white uh, wild wheat. It's kind of hard to say. Um, you know what? I just noticed something. I didn't stamp it very good here. So let's see how well my stamp positioner works. <laughs> let's test it. Yeah, you can see there's more ink up there. So if you put it up in the corner, and I'm not even going to re-ink it because there's ink there. Um, I'm just going to press on it and see what happens. It came out better. I still got a line though. Let me see. I don't know. This may ruin it just because there's a lot of ink. Um, it's going to make it very dark, but we'll see. Let's try it. Put it up in the corner. At least we know positionally wise it worked. Well, there, that's nice and dark and that's fine. It's all covered. So we'll do that. Yay me. All right. So I'm going to give it a second to dry, but I'm going to be using uh, the light wild wheat. They always come together now, the light and the dark side. This one, I, I'm, I'm not really coloring. I, I hesitate to even call it that. I'm 
like stabbing at it and sticking a little bit of color. I just thought it evened it out. It, you certainly could go without, which I did on one of the koalas. Um, didn't put anything on it. And then um, after we put our letters on, I'm gonna use Wink of Stella, which I can show you here. It's, it's clear in the background and just lays down a, a hint of glitter and as you can see well I'm gonna squeeze it a little bit as you can see I am NOT being careful where I put this it will just add a little something um, and I don't know to be honest if you're gonna be able to see the the glitter or the, it's not really it's a shimmer I would say it adds a shimmer um, so now let's talk about the letters um, I have already pre-cut them out. I used a scrap, and this is, normally I would use white, but I just happened to grab this. You take a very inexpensive, like under $2, tea ruler, because um, I wanted to make sure, this is kind of weak now because it's been cut out, but I wanted to make sure that my line was straight. So what I did was I lined up where I wanted to put where I, just anywhere on here. I could have done it right in the middle if I'd wanted to. I probably should have for demonstration purposes because this is wiggling. And you draw a straight line. Once you have a very straight horizontal line, then you can just take your letters. Of course, it's already done there, but basically I just took my letters, laid them on there, and then I put my ruler down, not worrying about the level part but somewhere where it would be very flat. And then I could push my letters literally right to it so that I knew I was getting them straight. It's not all gonna fit now, but. So I made sure that they were straight. I taped them down. I ran it through the um, stamp cut and emboss machine. Then I got my letters out. Well, once you have this uh, template, basically, you can stamp things, or you can just use scraps. I think, you know, the next time I just use a you know, little scrap to put them on there because it doesn't have to be straight, doesn't have to be perfect because what you're gonna do is you're gonna decide where you want this, however, where you want it. I'm gonna put it down here. I can use the lines to make sure that I'm staying straight. I'm gonna use some uh, positioning tape just to make sure that they it doesn't move around. And then I'm going to proceed to put some glue on it. And in this case, I mean, I, I'm, I can make pretty thin things with my uh, regular two-way glue, but uh, this is really skinny. So there's a couple of things you can do. Let me get the glue going. Um, you can use a fine tip uh, glue, which we do sell. And I, you know, I'm not putting the whole thing. Nobody's going to be wrestling me for moving this. But then I have a place to, to put it down and know that when I let it dry and pick this up, which I, I do kind of try to do that, not completely up, but to make sure it's not stuck to it. Then I know it's in the right spot. So we'll do it with all of them. And this one. And then the other way you can do it, and I did do an, a sample, which I will show you, is to put foam, a piece of foam uh, adhesive on the back of your sample piece that you're gonna be cutting out. Um, and then it'll be uh, not only adhesive, it'll be puffed up. There'll be some dimension to it. And I, I like that card, it, it was fine. Um, I just didn't feel, especially if you're going to make a bunch of them, I didn't feel it was worth it because it was, it takes a little bit of wiggling and maneuvering to get this, um, puffed up one in the right spot. So I, I just didn't feel like it was worth my time because it didn't give enough, um, wow factor to it. Um, so I just didn't bother with the rest of them that I made. Um, but this little um, 
fine nozzle. Like I said, we do sell this. You just pour some of your two-way glue in there and take the cover off and do that. Um, but I just, I, it does work out well for this particular project. I don't use it often, but it's very handy with these letters. Okay, so now I'm just gonna basically peel this off and make sure that the letters stay where they belong. See if the S isn't quite stuck enough to be trying to take that off. But anyway, as you can see, my letters are very straight. And that was very handy. And you always want to put the cover back on immediately. So it stays, it, it, it just doesn't clog up. It's really awesome. Comes in handy. All right, so we got hugs on there. And then I thought, you know, I got a little bit of sparkle going. I'm gonna squeeze this. And get a little more going. And then I actually went ahead and colored over the top of the letters. Um, and I will show you what that does. And again, it's slightly elevated. So you can kind of just lay it down and go around it. And in person, it does show up. Um, but I don't think I'm going to get... Oh, you can see the sparkle a little bit. It's it's pretty. It's a shimmer. It's not, it's not glittery, if you will. Um, so then you go ahead and I just will take my regular... Glue, or ooh, that came out. It's a brand new bottle. Woo wee! Gotta get rid of some of that. That's a lot. Don't need that. Um, it's a brand new bottle, though. I was so excited. It lasts forever. And towards the end, you kind of have to flick your wrist to get the glue to come out. I was very glad to move on to a new bottle. Um, and then you go ahead and you put this on top. And again, all of the measurements are on the project sheet, but if you're listing and you don't want to go look for it or wait, um, the wild wheat is five and a quarter by four. And then of course the card is five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. And that makes a lovely card. And just to go a little bit further, um, I decided that I liked, um, where is my pick tool? Um, I decided I liked the um, knot covered with a little gem, but as you can see, I'm over a little bit more, so that's not gonna work. One of the other things I did, and I'll show that card to you. Let me see if I get them here. Yeah. Is uh, instead of the dots, I used a brush butterfly, because you gotta have a little something on there. And I just put them on there. And isn't that cute? Now, the alternative that I did, as I was saying, that I puffed up the letters. You can see they're elevated above. And in this case, I did use a brushed brass butterfly. It's very hard to say. Um, but the other thing you have to do because it, or you don't have to, but because it's a dark background, um, usually, you want to put in something that you can write a little note on. Of course, you could stamp on it. This particular stamp set doesn't have, you know, words or anything small that you could stick on there. You could you could punch out high and just put that in the corner if you wanted to, um, or just leave it blank. It's pretty just like that. I hope you enjoyed this. If you uh, have any comments, please put them below. That helps me gauge whether or not I'm doing something that you enjoy or if you're looking for anything special. Um, again, you can go to my website to get the project sheet if you're not already there, stampmesilly.com, or email me if you don't have a demonstrator and would like a free catalog. Email me at jandufor at yahoo.com. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.